In this video, let's talk about what gear you should be getting to get better pictures and video. And I just got this box from Canon. Can anybody guess what's in it? Let's Talk is my new series about photography and filmmaking tips, and in this first episode I want to talk about why I decided to buy this lens instead of buying the camera body that everybody is talking about, the EOS R. With all the money I saved I was also able to buy something else, so stick till the end to know what it is. Let's roll the intro. Let's start by talking about camera gear because this is actually something very important to consider whenever you're going to buy a new piece of gear for your photography or your filmmaking. So I started with the Canon T2i, which was a great budget option at the time uh, to get good photos, but also great video quality, which wasn't always the case uh, in the time when I bought this one. It came with this lens, the 18 to 55, which is a great lens, but it wasn't very versatile. So I bought this lens, which is the 18 to 200 millimeter. Uh, about one year after getting my camera. And this is one of my favorite lens and one of my best buys in all the time I did photographing. This allowed me to get the wider shots at 18 millimeters, but I could also zoom in and get these really detailed shots at 200 millimeters. So I'm gonna show a few pictures I took with this lens, but I also shot a lot of videos with this camera over the years. About eight years after using this camera, I realized I was, it was time to change my camera because there were two big flaws with this one. The first one was that it didn't have autofocus in video mode, and I was starting to make more and more short films. So this was something really important for me uh, when filming the short films. And also, it wasn't very good in low light performances, and I started taking more star photography shots. So this was a second problem I wanted to solve. This is when I started looking into the Canon 6D Mark II, the camera I'm using right now to film this video. And this camera has a full frame sensor, so it's great for taking star photography shots. It also has a really good autofocus system with the dual pixel from Canon. I was so excited when I got this new camera, but I quickly realized that my APS-C sized lens wouldn't work with a full frame sensor, which was a big bummer. I knew I wanted to buy the 70-200 lens and the 16-35 lens, but I didn't have the money to buy both of these lenses because they're quite expensive, so I decided to go with the 24-105 lens because it had a good focal range and also very good picture quality for the price of this lens. In the last months, I decided it was time to upgrade my lenses because I was planning to go on a trip in Italy and I wanted to have a bigger focal range. So I wanted to be able to go over 105 millimeters. And this is where I wanted to buy a 7200 millimeter lens. And I was thinking of buying the f2.8 version because everybody has this lens and everybody says it's a great lens. So if everybody says it's a great lens, it's a great lens for me too, right? With all the rumors about the new Canon cameras that are coming out this year, I decided to read a little bit more about the EOS R and realized there are quite a few things that could be good for me, like the lighter weight, which would mean less weight on my back uh, when I'm walking around, but also better video features like the C-Log capabilities and also the built-in 4K. And everybody online seems to say it's a great camera, a camera you should be buying right now. So I started thinking, should I just buy a whole new system with a new body and new lenses instead of investing in lenses for DSLRs that might not even be here in a few years. Now let's go check to see if my cinnamon rolls are ready and make some coffee. I will tell you when I come back why I decided to go with this lens in the end.
When I was having all these questions is the moment where I found this lens and it's the 72-200 for f4 version from Canon and it has all the advantage of the f2.8 version without the weight. It's half the weight of the f2.8 version which is great for my back. It's also pretty recent, it came out not even two years ago, so it's a very recent lens with the latest technology inside of it. Let's go see what I had to say when I tested it out for the first time during spring break. Standing underneath the lights Look into each other's eyes Tired snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground Hear the sound of empty streets Yesterday has gone to sleep For the last week I've been testing the 7200 lens from Canon and I really liked it. The first thing is that it's a light lens so it saves weight in my backpack and that saves my back in the end. The second thing is that the pictures are really sharp and that's great because you're getting great result out of it and I don't really miss the f2.8 uh, aperture because I never really shoot at f2.8 outside anyways. I usually shoot around uh, f8 to f11 and the f4 was more than enough when I wanted to go with a lower aperture. One thing I forgot to mention is how good the stabilization is in this lens. It's simply insane and I don't even know how they achieve this level of stabilization in this lens. It's also important to come back to the point that you probably don't need f2.8 in most cases when you're taking landscape photos. It's actually more important to have a lens that slide because you're probably going to be carrying it around with you and you want something that's not going to break your back. It's also not very useful to have f2.8 because most of the time you're going to want the whole landscape to be sharp and to achieve that you're going to have a higher aperture like something like f9 to f11 and that means that you're never going to be using the f2.8 um, from the lens during the middle of the day but probably only at night but it's pretty rare to take landscape photos with such a lens at night. All of this reminded me one thing and it's that it's always more important to invest in lenses because they're really going to help you get better pictures. Having a sharper lens is going to give you sharper pictures that are going to look more professional and also having a better range so the longer range is going to allow you to take more subjects. Getting the newest body is always cool because it's packed of new features but it's not necessarily the thing that's going to help you the most in achieving better photos or better videos. There's also one big advantage with the 6D Mark II and that's the battery life. This is very important when I'm taking star trails, especially when I'm in the middle of the winter where I can leave the camera outside for two, three hours or even longer and it's just going to take pictures by itself. If I don't have good battery life, it's probably going to die after an hour or two, but with great battery life of the 6D Mark II, I can leave it going for hours and hours even if it's minus 20 degrees outside. I haven't talked about prices up to now, but it was a huge factor in deciding which lens I would be buying. If I bought the new EOS R with a lens or two, it would have cost me anything between $4,000 to $7,000 Canadian, which is a lot of money. The 7200 lens f2.8, the third generation, is about $2,500 right now. And if you buy the older version, it's about $2,000 online, which is still pretty expensive. I got this lens for just over a thousand dollars which is really cheap compared to the other options. And with all the money I'm saving, I actually have enough money to buy the other lens I really wanted which is the 16-35. For that one I decided to buy it on eBay for two reasons. One it's cheaper because it's an older version that's still really great, it's the uh, second generation but it's still a great lens but also to help and save the planet because I don't really need to buy the newest version. I hope this video made you realize, just like I was reminded, that you shouldn't be buying a camera body just because everybody online talks about it. Also, if you don't have the budget to buy a camera on new lens, just practice with whatever you have. So if you have a smartphone, just use that. If you want to upgrade to a cheaper DSLR, you could buy the Canon T8i, which has really good photo capabilities and also 4K video. And that's just crazy how much the technology advanced in the last years. I'm not sponsored by Canon so everything I said up to now is just my pure opinion but I just really like their products and that's why I talk about them in these videos.
I'm not saying you shouldn't be buying Canon's mirrorless cameras, they're actually really good, but I'm just saying that if you already have a good camera, you probably don't need to upgrade it right now. I'm gonna make the switch whenever I decide that I really need 4K videos and that I have the full workflow that's working for it, and that means I'm probably gonna need to upgrade my computer first. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like below to let me know that you liked it, and also subscribe to the channel to get more content like this. Bye-bye and see you in the next one.